children today i want to share with you a new topic nucleophilic substitution reactions sn1 mechanism myself dr dignavarkis unique molecular nucleophilic substitution reaction that is sn1 the mechanism is proposed by hughes and in gold like sn2 mechanism sn1 stands for nucleophilic substitution first order reaction S stands for substitution, N stands for nucleophilic, and 1 stands for first order reaction. It is a two step reaction. The first step involves formation of carbocation, and it is a slow step reaction. So it acts as the rate determining step. In step 1, the substrate, that is alkyl halide, in which the electrons shifted to bromide, the halide ion. Here it is bromide, bromine molecule. So it is the electron shifted to bromine. It is a slow step reaction and form a carbocation and bromide ion. Okay, so in step one, it's a formation of carbocation. It is a slow step reaction. So it acts as the rate determining step. Second step is step 2 in which the carbocation rapidly reacts with nucleophile and formation of the product. It is the product forming step. In step 2, the carbocation which reacts with the nucleophile. Here the nucleophile is the hydroxyl ion and the hydroxyl ion reacts with the carbocation and forming the product here the formation of alcohol okay so in nucleophilic substitution reaction which proceeds through a sn1 mechanism it involves two steps in step 1 the formation of carbocation in step 2 the carbocation rapidly reacts with the nucleophile and forming the product. Unimolecular substitution reaction in which the kinetics of the reaction is, it is kinetically first order process, so the rate depends on the substrate only. In the case of SN2 reaction, the rate depends on the concentration of both the substrate and the nucleophile. But here, only the rate depends on the concentration of substrate. So it is a first order process. Rate is equal to K into concentration of substrate, where K is the rate constant. We know the OH minus reacts with tertiary butyl bromide. The reaction is in such a way that the OH minus which attacks to the carbon al alkyl part of the alkyl halide, it will the bond the electrons accepted by the halide part and forming the product that is tertiary butanol and bromide ion. Once again I will tell you that the nucleophile attacks on the alkyl halide that is the substrate and reacts to form product and the leaving group leaves from the substrate molecule. Here the nucleophile is OH- and the substrate is tertiary butyl bromide and the product is tertiary butyl alcohol and the living group is bromide ion. So the rate, we know the rate depends on the concentration of the substrate only. Here the substrate is CH3 rice CBr. So the rate equation is rate is equal to rate constant into concentration of CH3 rice B. R. It is a SN1 reaction. 
Now we are discussing the hydrolysis of 2 bromo octane. That is, here we are discussing the stereochemical pathway of SN1 reaction of 2 bromo octane. Here you can see the 2 bromo octane. When a nucleophile comes to this substrate, the electrons shifted to the halide part and forming an ion pair like a carbocation part and a halide part. Okay. And after this, the carbocation part is separated from the ion pair and the leaving group also separated from the ion pair. Here, a possibility for the backside attack to the carbocation by the nucleophile. Okay. Here also there is a possibility for the front side attack. But here in the iron pair, the bromide ion prevents from the front side attack of the nucleophile. So here only a backside attack is possible. So you can see here an inversion product obtained by the backside attack of the nucleophile that is water molecule here. So from the water molecule the nucleophile is OH- formed and that will attach to the carbocation through the backside and forming an inversion product that is plus octane to all. Okay. But here you can see both backside and front side attack is possible. In the case of iron pair, only backside attack is possible. When the iron pair, the carbocation is separated from the iron pair, here both the possibilities existing that is backside attack and the front side attack of the nucleophile to the carbocation. Okay, so this carbocation can interact with the nucleophile that is water molecule from which OH- can attack through the both the side that is back side and also the front side. You can see here the back side attack. Here you can see inversion product. So here also you can get the same product as from the iron pair. Okay, that is inversion of product that is plus octane to all. By the front side attack, you can see here minus octane to all is obtained. That is retention of configuration. Okay, the same configuration as that of the 2 bromo octane obtained here. That is here minus 2 bromo octane reacts with water molecule and forming minus 2 octane to all. Okay, so retention of configuration occurs. That is the same configuration as that of the substrate molecule. So, in SN1 mechanism, both the products can be obtained. That is inversion of product and retention product. So, when a chiral molecule interacts with the nucleophile, it will give two enantiomers. So, racemization occurs. That means, racemic products obtained by this mechanism. Product obtained by this mechanism that we already seen here plus form of the product obtained through the backside attack minus form of the product obtained through the front side attack. But the product yield is different. Okay. Here retention product is less than the inversion product. So the yield of the inversion product is more when compared to the yield of retention product. 
Experiments with chiral compounds that can undergo SN1 reactions show that a great deal of racemization does take place but not completely always because in most cases when the relative quantities of the two enantiomeric products that is plus form and minus form are considered it is seen that the inversion product predominates over the retention product. Now we are discussing the stereochemistry of SN1 mechanism. First step in SN1 reaction is the heterocyclic cleavage of carbon, halogen, bond and formation of the carbocation. Here you can see the carbocation structure. Carbocation has a planar structure and it has sp2 hybridization. The nucleophile attacks the substrate carbon from the front side that is here the front side attack and also there is a possibility for the back side attack. Okay. Front side attack gives the retention of product, retention product. Here you can see the 2 bromo octane that reacts with a nucleophile OH- from the water molecule or from alcohol. It attacks to the front side. It will give retention of product. Okay. That is the same configuration as that of the substrate molecule. The backside attacks gives the retention of inversion of configuration that is inversion product obtained through the backside attack. So here the OH- attacks to the substrate molecule and forming inversion product. If the substrate is optically active, if this compound is optically active and the enantiomers formed by the backside and front side attack of the nucleophile, therefore the enantiomers formed in equal amounts, that is important, in equal amounts the product will be a racemic mixture. But the case is not always true because inversion product is more than the retention product. So, there is some little tendency to form a racemic product here. If the enantiomers formed in equal amounts, that is very important, then only it forms the product will be a racemic mixture. the factors affecting the reactivity in the SN1 reactions. Here we know the first step in SN1 reaction is the formation of carbocation by the heterolytic fission of the carbon halogen bond. Okay, so here the formation of the carbocation from the heterolytic cleavage of the substrate molecule and which is a slow step also and it is the rate determining step. So, the greater stability of the carbocation that is to be formed in the first step of the SN1 reaction, the greater would be the ease of its formation and thus the greater the SN rea SN1 reactivity of the original alkyl halide. Here the reactivity of the alkyl halide that is the tertiary alkyl halide is greater than the secondary alkyl halide, greater than the primary alkyl halide, greater than the methyl halide. So, the SN1 reaction prefers tertiary alkyl halide than methyl halide because the carbocation stability is, is in the same order as that of the SN1 reactivity order. Nature of the nucleophile is the second factor affecting SN1 reaction. We know SN1 reaction, the first step is the formation of carbocation and there is no role for the nucleophile and its rate determining step is the first step because it is a slow step. 
so there is no nucleophile present in the first step so there is no role or nucleophile has no effect on the rate of the sn1 reaction but in the case of nucleophiles we know it is a lewis basis stronger bases are better nucleophiles nucleophiles has no effect on sn1 reaction that we already discussed in some sn1 reaction the solvent itself can act as nucleophile such reactions are called solvolysis reaction nature of the living group weaker the basicity of the living group the better is the living group ability so in sn1 a reaction the weaker the basicity of the group the better is its living ability so here you can see the basicity order of the halide ions fluoride is more basic than chloride and bromide is more basic than iodide so the weaker the basicity here is for iodide ion so it is a better leaving group because there is not much stronger interaction with the alkyl part so the leaving group order is i minus greater than br minus greater than cl minus greater than f minus with f minus the alkyl group forms a strong bond but with i minus it forms a weak bond so it will leave faster when compared to fluoride ion so the leaving group ability of the alkyl halide or the faster in sn1 reaction as in the case of sn2 reaction the alkyl halide with the halogen group iodine is more reactivity in both sn1 and sn2 reactions than rbr greater than rcl greater than rf thank you for your attention